growing figs in a cold climate. Currently, it's minus 21 degrees Celsius. That's minus 6 Fahrenheit. I'm currently freezing and wishing spring would come real soon. We're currently in my fig garden. This is where I grow my figs. So, where are the fig trees? And where's the dirt? Let's go back to July and warm up. Okay, so you live in a cold climate and you want to grow a fig tree. Well, there is a way to do it. And I'm going to show you how. Figs are actually a subtropical tree. So unlike a palm tree or a citrus tree that stays green and growing all year long, a fig tree will go dormant in the winter, which means they'll drop their leaves and go to sleep in the winter. This actually makes them more cold tolerant than a tree that doesn't go dormant. Then, when spring rolls around, they'll wake up and start growing again. Trees that do this are called deciduous trees. This trait allows us to trick a fig tree so that they'll grow in our cold climate. You see, even though a dormant fig tree can take much more cold than an awake fig tree, it is still limited to how much cold it can actually take before experiencing damage and possibly dying. Here's another fact about any dormant fig tree or any other deciduous tree for that matter. When a tree is dormant like these, it doesn't need any sun and it doesn't need much water either. I explain why that is in my rooting video, which you should totally check out. Okay, so how can we keep our fig trees alive when winter temperatures are colder than they can actually handle? Well, the easy explanation of how to keep your fig tree alive in a cold climate is to put it in a pot as opposed to in the ground and keep it outside during the spring, summer, and fall. Then when the climate gets colder and your fig tree starts going dormant like this one and dropping its leaves, you simply move it to a garage or a cold room or a wine cellar Basically, the temperature of where it sits in the winter should be between minus 3 Celsius and plus 10 Celsius. If your garage is colder than that, then just throw some sort of blanket, burlap, or wrapping over your tree to protect it. It also helps to keep the pots not directly on the floor, which is the coldest part of your garage. Here I'm using pallets, and that's basically it for winter storage. Now, if you want to grow your fig tree in the ground and you live in a climate like mine where the temperatures can drop below minus 30, believe it or not, there are actually many different ways to do that as well. This is one way called ground bagging. I'm not going to get into the many other methods in this video, but if that's something you're interested in, Leave me a comment and I'll fill you in on the different techniques to do that properly. Okay, so you got your fig tree in a pot and you want to make sure you get it producing some figs for you in your short climate and before the cold comes. So what can you do to help it as much as possible? So here are my four steps to accomplish that. Step number one, choose the right variety. The right variety is the single most important decision to make when growing a fig tree, especially in a cold climate like mine. There are all sorts of factors to consider, such as figs with shorter ripening times. Do you want a variety that produces a Breba crop? A Breba crop is an early crop that grows on last year's wood, so it comes earlier than the main crop but doesn't usually taste as good as the main crop and actually causes a delay to the main crop. The size of the fruit is another factor, productivity and hardiness. I want to say something else about variety. You see, many people judge a fig by its color, 
So they'll group all the dark figs together and all the green figs together. This is the worst thing you can do. Compare this black Madeira and this black Ronde de Bordeaux fig. Both are almost the same color, but one ripens in half the time. Step number two is nutrition. Nutrition is very important, especially for any plant or tree that's growing in a pot. You see, when something grows in the outdoor soil, there are all kinds of worms and bugs in that soil, creating nutrition in the soil for your tree. There's no living thing or plant out there that can just live on water alone. People keep pouring water on their plant, never feeding it anything, and then wonder why it dies. Guys, the secret to having a green thumb is to simply feed your tree and plants regularly. Step number three is choosing your potting mix. Do not, and I repeat, do not take soil from your garden and use it in your pot for your fig tree or any other potted plant. You need to use a potting mix. Potting mixes are made for pots. That's why they're called potting mixes. They usually have all kinds of components made for a pot. Components to help reduce mold, and make the medium more airy and light, and many other things. Remember those beneficial bugs and worms in the soil we were talking about before? Well, they're not usually in your pots, so your soil needs components found in potting mixes, like perlite, for example, that makes your medium more airy. Step number four is extending your season. So how can you extend your season? Well, obviously you can't control the weather, but when your tree is in a pot, you may be able to control the temperature around it. Many fig enthusiasts wake up their tree a bit earlier by giving it a head start indoors by a window or put it under a grow light, then move it outside once the cold is gone. There's also a technique called the fig shuffle where you put your pots outside during the day and bring them in during the night to protect them from the cold at night. Personally, I have this beautiful temporary greenhouse tent that I put up in March or April with a thermostat-controlled heater that kicks in if it gets extremely cold outside. So my trees are all green and even showing some figs before the actual growing season in my area starts. This gives me an incredible advantage. Of course, for any of these extending your season techniques, other than the fig shuffle, you need to be careful not to shock your tree when you move it outside by not moving it directly in the sun. You're going to want to ease them in slowly. Take care. Thanks for watching.